Well, my story is not remarkable. I was heavy as a child growing up, and I had red hair and crooked teeth and glasses. My self-image was that I was heavy and unathletic, so I got very shy and I wouldn't participate much. By the time I got to high school, I was so desperate to fit in uh, that I started dieting. And I tried every diet imaginable, and I failed on every one. So between high school and college, I decided I was going to lose 20 pounds. I only lost 15, but I did that out of sheer determination because there was no way I was going to college that heavy. What I wanted more than life itself was I wanted to wear jeans with the pockets close together in the back instead of out here. <laughs> I would have given anything for that. When I got to college, I was terrified that I was going to gain that weight back, so I basically learned how to starve myself. So I did get thin. Unfortunately, when I came home from college, I shocked my parents, who marched me right off to the doctor. The doctor said, Linda, you need to start eating, which I did. And I gained all that weight back, plus another 20 pounds. I was completely miserable. In fact, at, there came a point when I was in college, I got so desperate that I actually decided to kill myself. I lived on the 12th story of a 12-story dorm. I could just open up that window and throw myself onto the parking lot below. And that was my, that was my plan. So that night, I climbed into that big window frame with the open window ready to poise to throw myself out the window. Interestingly, a little voice then said to me, Linda, that would be a really weeny thing to do. That, that voice was telling me also that it would really hurt my parents if I did this. And I couldn't do that. So it stopped me right there. And I remember climbing down out of the window and just being, feeling so completely helpless that I collapsed on the floor in tears. Eventually I stopped crying. And I remember feeling so completely helpless and hopeless at that point. I had not one clue what to do. But I did make two very important decisions. One was I decided to live, if only for my parents at that point. And number two, I decided that I was going to get past the whole issue of weight once and for all. What I really wanted was freedom. I wanted to go anywhere, do anything, wear anything I wanted, and not feel like my body was holding me back. That was the deep longing that I had. And I remember looking around my room and seeing all these diet books. And I remember very ceremoniously gathering all those diet books and making a vow that I would never do that again. And I took them all out and threw them away in the dumpster. I realized that if I was ever gonna get past this issue, I was gonna to have to figure it out myself. So I was in college, I went to our college library, and I started reading biographies of successful people. I wanted to know how they reached their goals. And what I discovered was that there were some consistent threads with all of them. They decided exactly what they wanted, and then they acted as if they had their goal long before it actually manifested. And I thought, could it possibly be that simple? So I began to try that. I'd love to tell you that everything just went smoothly after that and it was all set to music. It was not. I spent about the next 10 years struggling a lot, trying to implement those ideas I had. Well, what I remembered was that the diet experts have us focusing on the very thing we do not want which is food or weight. And what do you know? Whatever you focus on gets bigger, quite literally. That's the fatal flaw of the dieting model, is we focus on the thing we do not want. Successful people don't do that. Successful people focus narrowly on what they do want, never what they don't want. I finally began to achieve some success, and I was so excited. I just wanted to share it with other people. So I researched a way I could do that, and I found that I could buy a weight management franchise, and I just thought that was perfect. So I purchased that franchise, and I was so excited to help other people. Then I went to a national conference, and the owner of the company got up on stage and said, you need to understand that our business is built on repeat business. And I remember feeling so shocked. 
I actually just felt betrayed. And I realized then that I was gonna to have to leave that industry. What I know now is that you don't have to be on a diet. The information has been out there for years about what to eat and that you should exercise. The missing link is that the information about how to change how you think is not getting communicated. That's what I want to change. I want people to understand that by changing how you think, you can get past the whole issue permanently. I wrote my latest book, Leave That Behind, to share my story and the tools that I learned along the way. And then I created the program to go along with it to help people implement the tools so that they could have a real roadmap on how to do that and the support that they need so they can get past the whole issue and live the abundant life they're meant to live. There are four content areas that are very important for you to understand. The first is reprogramming your robot. That's where you learn how to change your thinking patterns to support your goals. The second part is designing your life to make sure that your life actually supports what you're trying to do. The third part is staying focused. After all, life is very distracting. We want to make sure you have the tools you need to stay focused all the way to your goal. And the last part is allowing success, which seems like that should be easy, but a lot of us sabotage ourselves. So I want to make sure you have the tools that you need so that you don't do that, because I want you to permanently leave that behind.